The Article 50 process is now underway, and in accordance with the wishes of the British people, the United Kingdom is leaving the European Union. In the House of Commons behind me, there's been furious debate about Brexit and Britain's relationship with the EU. Understanding the EU, its many institutions, how they fit together, how laws are made and how much it costs is really complicated. But what exactly is the EU and how does it work? Britain joined the EU in 1973, but it was formed long before then and even had several different names. Five years after World War II, France and Germany formed a plan to ensure they'd never go to war with each other ever again, and in doing so they formed an organisation along with four other countries called the European Coal and Steel Community, or the ECSC. Fast forward seven years and the very foundations for the EU were formed in the European Economic Community, or the EEC. Britain, along with Denmark and Ireland, joined the European Union on January 1st in 1973, bringing the total members up to nine. Through the steady growth, the EU as we know it today was eventually formed in 1993, leading to the EEC vanishing into the wider framework of the EU. Today there's 28 members with a combined population of 500 million. But what are the four key institutions that work together to run the EU? Despite its sometimes volatile relationship, Britain along with the EU's other 28 member states successfully work together on issues ranging from the single market, defence and foreign policy. They have even regulated how curvy a banana should be. The EU is made up of many institutions, but perhaps the most important to understand are its key four. The first is the European Commission, the EU's politically independent executive arm, which is solely responsible for drawing up and later enforcing legislation that the EU Parliament and Council will adopt. The College of Commissioners consists of one member from each EU state that represents the country's interests on areas like trade policy and humanitarian aid. One member alone doesn't have more power over another. Instead, the Commission shares the collective responsibility in the decision-making process. Heading the European Commission is President Jean-Claude Juncker, who decides the policy direction of the Commission. Once a new law has become official, it's voted on by the Commission by obtaining an overall majority and then passed to the Parliament and Council for the next stages of the legislative process. The next big body is the European Parliament currently led by Antonio Tajani, consists of 751 members called MEPs who are directly elected every five years. Each member is grouped by party affiliation and each country can have between 6 and 96 MEPs. The UK has 73. The Parliament itself has three main roles. Firstly, it has a legislative role to pass EU laws based on the Commission's proposals. Secondly, it has a supervisory role to scrutinise institutions, setting up inquiries and observing elections. And lastly, it has a budgetary role, where together with the Council, it establishes the EU budget. The Parliament itself works in two stages, committees to prepare legislation and plenary sessions to pass them. MEPs hold their monthly plenary sessions in Strasbourg and each sit within their political groups in the chambers to give a final vote on the proposed laws. However, it doesn't work alone, but instead works with the Council of the European Union to negotiate and adopt EU laws. Bills also progress through the Council of the EU, which is a bit like the House of Lords in the Commons behind me. Their job is to debate and adopt new laws along with Parliament in what's known as co-decision. The European Council reconfirms its conclusions of the 25th of November 2018, in which it endorsed the withdrawal agreement and approved the political declaration. The Council meets in 10 different configurations, depending on what's being discussed, which could be anything from economic and financial affairs to agriculture and fisheries. 
Each country sends their representative for that area to meet in Brussels or Luxembourg and cast a vote on behalf of their country. The council takes its decisions by a simple majority, qualified majority or a unanimous vote and for a majority to be reached in the council, 16 out of the 28 countries have to agree. Unless for topics like taxation or foreign policy, when a unanimous vote is needed. Both the Parliament and the Council can hold up to three readings before they agree or reject a proposal. Finally, it's up to the Court of Justice of the European Union to enforce the law. Governments, companies or individuals face heavy sanctions or fines if they break the rules. Recently, Google was slapped with a 1.49 billion fine for abusing its market position. Going back to our bendy banana from earlier, it's the EU Commission's job to formulate the law before sending it to the EU Parliament and EU Council to debate. Once the law has been approved by MEPs and government representatives, the EU Court of Justice steps in to enforce the law to regulate the curvature of bananas. The EU is Britain's biggest trading partner, which allows free movement of goods and services to other countries in the common market. Britain's payment to the EU budget has been growing over the decades, and the combined estimated price of being an EU member has so far cost close to £122 billion between 2000 and 2017. Everyone living in the EU indirectly contributes to its budget through things like taxes. That works out as less than £1 a day, but critics argue that the EU has taken too much power from the UK and wastes taxpayers' money. So with the Brexit deadline having been delayed further, Britain for the time being remains in all the components of the EU, including the Commission, the Parliament, the Council and the Court. But for how much longer?